If you're looking to level up as a developer, then open source software is one of the best ways to do that. But getting started with open source is really difficult. So in this video, I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to get started with open source software. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now, before we get started, the very first thing that I want to mention is that you're going to need to have a GitHub account created. So if you haven't already created a GitHub account, just go to github.com, sign up for an account, and then you can get started where we are now. And also, you're going to need to connect that GitHub account to your local environment, your local computer. And I have an entire video showing you how to do that step by step, which I'm going to have linked in the cards. So if you haven't already connected GitHub to your own computer, make sure to check out that video. It'll show you exactly how to do it then you can come back here. That video is also going to explain all of the complex topics around Git itself, which is perfect because you're going to need to understand that to contribute to open source software. Once you create an account or sign into your already existing account, you're going to be brought to this homepage here, which is going to show your recent activities. Mine's pretty populated because I have a ton of projects created, but yours, if you just create an account, is most likely going to be empty. And what you need to do when you first get started into open source software is think about what you want to contribute in. If you're a JavaScript developer, for example, maybe think about different JavaScript libraries that you use that you'd like to contribute towards. Or if you work in Python, for example, think about Python libraries that you like. Essentially, just thinking about libraries that are open source that you use all the time and that you enjoy, those are great starting places. It is also generally a good idea to go with larger libraries and projects if you can to get started, because they're gonna have a much larger community of people that can help you out along the way, because it can be difficult when you're first getting started and it can be discouraging. So having a large group of people there to help you out and encourage you along the way is really helpful. Also, if you don't really have any libraries that you'd like to use, just search for different topics, such as, you know, typing in machine learning, for example, if you're interested in machine learning, and try to find big popular libraries around this that you can contribute to. But more than likely, there are certain libraries that you use on your own that you'd like to contribute to. For this example, we're just going to be using React because React is a massive library. Here we go by Facebook. Tons of people use it, and it's something that is open source so that you can contribute to it. And whenever you're going to contribute to a project, the very first thing that I like to look for is going to be the contributing guidelines, essentially the rules around contributing. And generally, this is going to be instead of a file called contributing.md, this is going to be all the rules around contributing. But if you don't see this contributing.md file, Generally, if you scroll down a little further, you're gonna see this thing called the readme. And the readme is just information about the library itself. As you can see, they have installation, documentation, and so on, examples. And generally, towards the very bottom of this, you're gonna find a section called contributing or development or something like that. And this is going to have all the rules around how to contribute, how to download the code to get started, and so on. So inside of here, you can see they have a code of conduct, which is essentially the rules around how people communicate to make sure it's a very welcoming and friendly environment. And then they have the contributing guide, if I just click on this, that goes into details exactly how to contribute to every single part of the React ecosystem. Generally, if you're contributing to a larger project, there's going to be a lot of stuff to read through on your very first pull request. As you can see, this is a ton of stuff to read through. So that may be intimidating, but really these are just rules that are set in place to help you along the way of making your first pull request and your first change. Generally, this just walks you through the process of how to build your environment, how to work on the code, how you need to set up your changes, and so on. And we're going to go through all of that. But since React is such a big and popular library, I don't really want to spam them with a pull request that doesn't mean anything for this example video. So I actually created just a really dummy example here that just has a single readme file. And as you can see, there's a typo inside this readme file. This is what we're going to be using for our example and our use case of creating a pull request and doing our first open source contribution. But when you're on a project like React, and let's say you do want to contribute to React, a great place to go when you're working on a project is this Issues tab. This is going to be all of the problems inside of the environment. Essentially, these are issues, whether they're new features, bugs, and so on, that they want to have fixed inside of React or added to React. And if you go through here, you can see exactly the title of it. There's different labels for each one of these. And generally, when you're on a larger project, there's going to be a label for something like first time issue or a good first issue or something like that. So if you click on this labels tab right here, when that loads up, you can scroll through and eventually if you just look through these, you should hopefully see something along the lines of good first issue right here. We have good first issue. If you click on this, it's going to bring you to all of the issues that have that tag. And this is great when you're just getting started is if you can find something like good first issue or first issue or something like that, it's essentially an issue 
that the developers have noted as being something that's really beginner friendly. It's generally a small task that is good for getting started with. So you could click on one of these. As you can see, we'll click on it here to load up. At the very top, it has a description that the person left for what the issue is. And then there's comments down here of people discussing the issue back and forth. As you can see, there's quite a few comments on here. And you can read through these comments, read through the issue, and then you can get started developing the code yourself. But how exactly do you go about developing the code for yourself? Because as you can see, we have the issue, we have all the comments, we have all this information, we have the documentation, the guidelines, but how do we go about making changes to the code? This is something that really confused me when I got started in open source. What you need to do, we'll just use this example here. Essentially what you need to do is click this fork button over here. What fork is going to do is it's going to create a copy of all of the code inside of this repository and add it to your own GitHub account. Because right now this is on this WDS OSS example account that I just randomly created. We want to put this on our own account, which is my web dev simplified account. So if we click this fork button, is this going to load up this page here? And as you can see, it says web dev simplified slash OSS. And this is my own personal account. And it's going to say it's forked from WDS OSS example. This is the account or the uh, repo that we forked this from. Essentially, we copied all of the code in this repository and added it to our own personal account because that way we can make changes to it on our own account. So now what we need to do is actually copy this code down to our own local environment on our computer so that we can make these changes. So if we click this code button here, it might say clone or download. You'll see we have options here and we're just going to use SSH and we just need to click this copy button here. Once we click that, it copies this URL so we can clone the code down to our local environment. If we just click this minus button here, we have Visual Studio Code open. Essentially, you can use any editor that you want to use. It really doesn't matter. I just have Visual Studio Code open. I'm going to open up the terminal here. And once that loads, I can type in git clone and then paste in the URL that we copied. This is the URL that directs to our repository that we just created by forking the old repository. If I click enter and let this run, you can see it copied all of those files into this OSS example. And then we have this readme right here where we need to update this to be spelled correctly. So I'm just going to change my directory to be inside this OSS example by just typing CD OSS example. That way I'm inside of the directory so I have access to get inside of here. And now all I need to do is just make some changes. For example, I could just say type in just here, click save. Now I've made these changes and I need to commit these changes. And generally you want to do this on a new branch. So we're going to create a branch by just saying git checkout dash B. That's going to create a new branch and we're just going to call it fix typo. That's the name of our branch. Now we have this new branch that has this code that we just changed. And now we need to add and commit this code. So we'll type in git add. And we're going to put the period here that just adds all of our files. And then we're going to say git commit dash m. That's to say a message. And then inside of these quotes here, we're just going to type out our message, which is just going to say fixed a typo. Hit enter. And there we go, we've committed our changes, we've added our changes. Now all we need to do is push our changes up. So we can just say git push. And you'll notice immediately we get an error. It says the current branch fixed typo has no upstream branch. To fix, push the current branch and set the remote as upstream, use this command. We just need to copy this, paste this, and run it. And the reason for this is we have this branch we just created called fixed typo, but on GitHub there is no branch called fixed typo. So we just told GitHub to create a branch called fixed typo and connect it with our own local code. So now once we've made our changes, we added them, we committed them, we pushed them up in their own branch, we can go back to GitHub. So let me just minimize out of here. And if we go back to GitHub, you can see it says fix typo had recent pushes less than a minute ago. Essentially, we created a new branch and made changes to it recently. We can click compare and pull request. If you don't see this have showing up, for some reason this doesn't show up, and maybe you pushed your changes and came back a few days later, this won't be here. You can click pull request here. And you can create a new pull request manually like this if you want and just choose the correct base and head repository. In our case, we're just going to use this compare and pull request button because it does it all for us. And you're going to see something interesting. Here it has the base repository as WDS OSS example. So this is the original version. This would be like React itself. And then here, our head repository is our own local copy of this repository. So this would be like our own local copy of React. And this right here is the actual public version of React itself that we're pushing to. In our case, it's just this example repository, but you can imagine it just like React. So we're pushing up to this main branch here. And for us, we're pushing our fixed typo branch, which contains our changes to the main branch here. And then what you want to do here is leave a comment. And when you get to the contributing guidelines of the documentation you're using for React, for example, it's probably going to tell you exactly how to write out these comments. It's going to tell you things like including screenshots, including before and afters, and so on. 
In our case, we're just going to say fixed read me typo because it's pretty self-explanatory what the changes were, but generally you want to go into much more detail here. And then if you scroll down a little further, you'll notice down here, it shows all of the changes that we made. You can see we just changed this miscorrectly spelled word into the correctly spelled version, and that's it. And once we're done and we think all of our changes are good, we can click create pull request. We just click this button right here. You're going to see it load for a second, and you're going to notice we get brought to the actual version here, the WDS OSS example version that we copied from, and it has a new pull request. So essentially we made changes. We created our own local copy of this repository. We made changes to it. We pushed those changes up and then we created a pull request, which is essentially saying, I made changes. Here they are. Do you accept them or decline them? And now I have these changes set up here. So the person that owns this repository can now either accept or decline the changes that I've made. And you can see here we have files changed where they can see all the different files that have changed. We have our conversations tab. And this is just like in React. You can see React has 121 current pull requests. And if we just look at one of the more recent ones, let this load for a second, you can see that there's 17 files that are changed. You can look at all of the changes in each of the files, and you can see the conversation around this to see exactly what the changes are. In our case, it's just a much more simple example. Our conversation is very short. Files change is very short. So now what is the next step once you do this? Because this is where most people stop. They create their first pull request and then they're done. What happens next? How does it work from the maintainer perspective? Luckily, I have my account, this WDS OSS, logged in on a different tab. So as we can see here, I'm now logged in as the person that owns this repository. I am the maintainer for this repository. If I just refresh, you'll notice there's a new pull request. I can go access this, click on it to open it up, and now I'm the person that maintains this project. I'm signed in as the person that owns this project. And you can see here, I have the option to merge this pull request, which is going to take all these changes that we created earlier and it's going to merge them into the actual real code base. Or I could leave a comment. For example, I could say, can you add more to the readme? I could click comment. If we just come over here, go back to our other example, you can see there's a comment that says, can you add more to the readme? And we could go back down to our code. We could make more changes to our code, push it up, update our pull request, and go back and forth a bunch of times. But eventually, it's going to get to the point where your code is either going to get accepted or it's going to get closed, essentially declined. So let's take a look at what an acceptance would look like. If we just go back to our other tab here, we can just click this merge pull request button. This is what happens when the owner of the repository accepts your changes and merges them. We'll confirm that merge. Now, if we just give it a second to load here, you can see that this pull request has been marked as merged. It no longer shows up in the list. And if we go to our code, you can see that that typo is now fixed because it was merged into the main branch, essentially the master branch of the code. And that's all it takes to create your very first pull request into open source software. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.